State Representative hey. Robert Shadowin is from Ruston. Hey, Mr. Rob, how are you this morning? <laughs> I'm good. How are you folks up there in North Louisiana where I live? Well, and- we're, we're getting work done here. I hear y'all aren't in Baton Rouge. Well, I mean, we have storms outside in the weather in North Louisiana. We have the storm down here inside the capital. Just watch the And it's the like weather it's it's been like above 80 degrees every day for the past few days. That's a little strange, huh? Yeah, it's a little weird for being in February, and as much as we got pounded by rain, I understand back home in the district I serve, Lincoln and Union Parishes, they have had a ton of rain. Have y'all over there in Shreveport? Oh, yes, yeah. sir. In fact, oh, yeah. we have. Um, I, yeah. I was driving in this morning, and I heard a newscast, and it starts off as mm-hmm. follows. John Bell Edwards, Governor John Bell Edwards' special session is careening off course. Is is? Do you agree with that, or do you think that's just uh, the, the hokey? Oh, I think that's a little bit of over-sensationalism. I don't think we've had <laughs> as smooth a sailing out of the bay as we all had hoped we would have as far as it careening off course man we are taking some detours down here but i think still being the eternal optimist i believe we still may get some some good work done rob what is the answer is it is it going to have to be some sort of compromise that would include part of that penny sales tax well yeah that's being discussed a lot down here. And I think one of the problems that many of the polarized factions have, not so much of thus those in the middle, is we've lost the definition of compromise. And compromise, you know, being a country lawyer means you don't get everything you want, and the other side doesn't get everything they want, but you 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 come to an agreement on where you can can live. Uh, it's been my experience in a compromise if both people leave and uh, neither one feels satisfied or both feel like it's fair, that's a good one. One of the things However, we heard... However, if one side leaves and the other side's clicking their heels and the other side's thinking, I got a short change, then that's not a good compromise, and that's what we're working on. We had State Rep. Dodie Horton on yesterday, and she was talking about the possibility of rolling over from the penny sales tax that expires in July, a quarter penny of that But she said the problem she and a lot of other Republican legislators were having was the fact that it was not going to be designated to anything specific. But if but what was on the table was that that quarter penny would go to the general fund. And she said, I I just can't go along with that. What do you think about that? I disagree with that. One of the problems that we have is that we have so many dedicated funds in statutes as well as our Constitution that it does not give us the flexibility to address the business needs of this state from year to year. In fact, last year I carried a bill that would have eliminated a lot of the constitutional dedications, which has been supported by business groups around the state. Um, And I, I got it out of committee, but on the House floor it got 61 votes and we needed 70, so it died in the House. You, you so Rob, you represent you, you represent oh, yeah. a conservative district. Um, most of your your residents that live here, they're probably telling you no more taxes, cut the budget, cut the budget. How do you answer people who are just saying government has too much money, cut, 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 no more taxes? I generally answer them by giving them the example of an email I got last year when the gas tax idea failed. And the email I got was, I am so glad that the gas tax failed. We need no new taxes. Semicolon. What are you going to do at the intersection of Highway 8 and Highway 30? It's horrible. Well, we get into an impossible box where people want the same services. They don't want any services cut, but they don't want any taxes. And what we're talking about down here is how to replace nine hundred and about ninety four billion uh, nine hundred ninety four million I'm sorry uh, dollars that is expected to go off on June thirtieth, two thousand and eighteen at midnight. Um, and that's that one penny sales tax that we passed two years ago that was the temporary bridge while we worked on reconstructing the fundamental deficiencies of our budget. We haven't done that over the last two years, and we've had 
four special sessions, a regular session in 2017, and now our fifth special session. A lot of, and we're uh, still not anywhere close to where we need to be. A lot of Republicans down there, a lot of Republicans from up here, all over the state, are having a little trouble with John Bell's explanation about the six hundred million dollars in cuts, where where Jay Darden had described those as not cuts but finance swaps, and then you read about the three hundred million in deferred payments for Medicaid providers. Um, are are you in line with the Republicans on that? lack of trust or are you a little on the uh, are you going against the party grain well I, I never intend to be going against the party grain except when i think they're misled and wrong and in this case i don't know if there's been a total of 613 million dollars in cuts i do know there's been cuts because the state general fund that is the the portion that we louisianians put up has decreased by $200 million since 1617. So I know there has been some cuts, and the budget that we're looking at right now in this session is about $400 million less than the standstill budget that the Republican-backed Senate and House passed last year. But pardon me just a second, so Mr. Robert. So this budget is even more conservative than the conservatives want. That the governor, the governor is really sticking hard and fast to his $600 million number. Now, you just said, yeah. I don't know if there's been $600 million in cuts, but do you see where that might cause a, a little a, a bridge that may be too far to cross? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Uh, And one of the things that I've learned down here, that as long as we pledge allegiance to a party and certain personalities and put that over our oath of office to the people and the principles that we need to be guiding us, that's where we get stuck. Because now, just like in so many places, it's more of a Republican versus Democrat, Democrat versus Republican, and I, for one, am sick of it. We, we a lot of residents are too. We're we're tired of it. We want y'all you guys to do something. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's it's rather embarrassing that we now have our seventh session in twenty four calendar months, and the only thing we've done is to be able to go from a three billion dollar hole that we had on January first of two thousand sixteen to a one billion dollar hole. Mm. So, well and good, but that's. That's as if your house is on fire and the fire department comes and says, well, we're going to put out two-thirds of the fire, but we got to go now. So Miss Doty told us, homeowner much good. Miss Doty told us yesterday, Aaron down at the other end of the table said, do you think this special session is going to turn out to be ju- – is it just a waste of everybody's time? And she said, I'm afraid it is. What do you think about that? I arrived here with some glimmer of hope because – This special session was not going to be called unless there was some assurance that we had the requisite number of votes to move some ideas and bills forward. Well, I'm talking to you all on a Friday morning. We've been here since Monday. We've not gotten but a handful of bills out of the House Ways and Means Committee, and these are not the substantive bills that addresses our imminent problem. So one so third, one third that, of the session's gone. One third of the session is gone, and not much is done. No, and it's really frustrating. What what I would like for our house leadership to do is simply get the bills out of the committee, put them on the house floor, and make us vote. You know, get us on record. And if people don't like it, they in two years can hire p- other people. Mr. Rob, I this, understand that. this is going to sound like a gotcha question, and I don't mean it to be, but it's just something we ask most politicians that come on the show, especially state sure. politicians. Do you think Louisianans, do you think the people of Louisiana are undertaxed? Do I think they're undertaxed is the question? Yes, sir. Okay. No, I don't think we're undertaxed, even though there's only four states in the United States that have an overall lower tax basis than we do. We're number 46 out of 50. So you can't say that we're overtaxed by any means. But what I see happening is the, most people that study this realize that we have deficiencies in the way we budget. And I think if we reallocated some of the tax base 
um, yeah, it would raise taxes on some. I had the package of bills last year that would have lowered income taxes on 91% plus of everybody in Louisiana which idea resulted from an independent study commission authored by now John Schroeder, the treasurer, but back then Representative Schroeder. We got the ideas in. I put a package of bills together to reflect that independent commission's results, and it died in committee. And you would think lowering taxes on most of our people is a Republican strong tenant. And the Republican stacked committee killed those bills.